Another exciting episode of 12 Days of Giving, second annual. It's really fun. Glad to have Jamie back on. Hey, I'm not going to go through his intro. Everybody, you know how this rolls. This is about the client and their story. So if you want that, we'll have that in the description below. But welcome back, and you know, let's dive right into it. I, your topic hits probably a lot of people more than they think or more than people that they know, and it's really exciting to get into it. So let's, let's do this. Yeah, man, let's do it. All right, so tell us. Tell us a little background of the, how the client came to you, what the client's about, mm -hmm. and then we can dive into to the whole story. Yeah, totally. And again, thanks for having me on, man. I think this is going to be a, a, a great conversation. Uh, the, the case that came to mind when you and I were talking about this was it was it was an easy it was an easy one. I mean, we had we've had a lot of cases this year, but this one really stuck out to me. Not only from a personal perspective, because I really really felt bad about the client situation, but I think from, you know from where we took where she was to where she is today is is really a, a heartwarming story, so to speak. So. Um, I can't remember exactly how how the client came to us. Probably through one of our Facebook ads, or you know, through our website, or whatever. But um, the the story is effectively it was a the this gal was going through a divorce, and she has she has a young son. I want to say he's you know sixteen, seventeen years old or so. Or so um, he does have autism, so he he needs some additional support. But as once she decided that she uh, wanted a divorce. Mainly that stemmed from some domestic violence issues that were involved with with her case and, and in, in her life. And she went when she called us, she was actually living in a shelter. OK, so her first step was I need to get out of this situation and get my, myself and my son to safety, which was amazing. And, and, and thankfully, she thought that that through first. And so she ended up in a shelter. I can't remember exactly how long long she was there when she came to us, but um, she decided to reach out and get some help uh, on the financial side uh, because she already had she already had an attorney who wasn't doing very much work for her on the financials and and was spending a lot of time and wasting a lot of money trying to figure out you know uh, how to help her calculate alimony correctly, what kind of support she was going to need for her son because. He he was he's probably not going to be able to care for himself the way that you know most adults would, you know, after they turn 18 and, you know, get into their early twenties, he's going to need ongoing support, right? So child support may end, but he's still going to need some level of support moving forward. The attorney couldn't figure out how to, how to work through that. And, and um, so there, there were some issues there, but uh, she decided to reach out. We talked a little bit about her situation and I actually, I, I actually cut her a deal on our fee. I decided that I was going to do half of the work pro bono for her. So I was like, you know, if you can commit to, I think, I think we agreed to, you know, a small, like $1,500 engagement fee or something just to cover a few hours of our time. And then I did the rest for free for her. But, um, we, we did gather a lot of her financial information. We, we worked through, um, getting an understanding of, you know, what she actually owns. There was a house involved. There were some retirement plans. And the biggest one was the husband's pension. Now, one of the things that a lot of attorneys miss when they're going through uh, the helping people get through the exercise of divorce and trying to understand the financials is they don't really understand the, the real value of a pension. Okay, and you and I understand time value of money calculations and discount rates and interest rates and cost of living and actuarial tables and those types of things because we're in this world. Most attorneys and the average person are not, so they 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 think well. If I'm getting $2,000 a month you know, from this pension, that's $24,000 a year. Maybe I'll live another 20 years. So I think yeah, the pension's worth $240,000. It's not necessarily the case, right? Because if we have, there's all these other factors that are involved. So when we went through the exercise with her of, of really trying to figure out what that real value was of the pension, it was substantially higher than what she was willing, she was planning on settling for based on the advice of the attorney. So we've, we organized all of her information. We help her sort through all the financial details. We put a real value on the pension for her. And we also helped her sort through things like, what is my future? What are my future support going to look like? Okay, like? What kind of child support? What kind of family support am I going to get? What, what is alimony going to look like? We worked, or, worked through all those things. And that, was, that took a period of, I think, probably two or three months it took us to get through this. And all along the way, unfortunately, we're getting zero help from the attorney. <laughs> getting Go zero figure. help from the attorney because the attorney's like, I don't understand any of this, you know. Right. And so we finally got 
long story short, we she went to settlement. We were able to get her maximize the the pension plan for her, so that was huge. Uh, gave her access to some cash because she was able to to take some of that money. She was able to separate the pension. She took her portion of it by way of the um, quadro or the the court order acceptable for processing. She was able to take a little bit of money out and use that to start funding her new life. So now, last I last I checked, uh, she she has a uh, a deposit down on a new place for her and her son, and she's going to be able to get herself out of that you know, that shelter here, here pretty soon. So it's, uh, I'm, I can go into more, some more details about some of these other aspects of this too, but that in a nutshell, that's the story. And from my perspective, it was like, you know, we gave up a lot of free time for her this year, but man, I mean, we put her in a really good spot moving forward, I think. Yeah. And that's, that's impactful. I couldn't imagine going through her and her situation with an attorney. And this isn't to knock on attorneys, although it kind of is, they just don't know what they don't know. And so they're going to charge you for that research. And then you have to hope that the research they're doing is coming from someone like us. And yep. it just runs up the bill. But let's let's start from the beginning from a more emotional standpoint. Mm -hmm. When she was fed up and finally came to you and found you, love social media, so I'm glad it worked, hopefully. Uh, where was she in her state of mind at that point when she first started? She was pretty down and out. I mean, you can imagine the situation she's in, right? She's given what money she does have access to. She's given that to the attorney and she's put a lot, she put a lot of the attorney fees on credit cards and started to rack. I think she even took out a personal loan or one of these like payday advance loan type of things um, in order just to get the cash to be able to, to give to the attorney. So, and she's living in a shelter. She's dealing with the emotions that come with that. She's got a child that she has to care for who has, you know, health issues and, and needs of, of, of his own. And she's trying to work at the same time. You know, so she has, you know, she has a job that she's, she's been employed at, um, you know, for, for I think probably 20 years or so. And, and so she has those responsibilities, a lot of spinning plates. And she, at the, you know, she's, and she's trying to find a place that's safe for her to, to live because, because of the domestic violence that's involved. So. Um, I can't speak for her or what her mental state was, but I'm only guessing that, you know, it was, you know, it was rough. Yeah. I, it had to have been. Um, yeah. and those listening, another episode in the 12 days of giving will be with one of my clients who runs, um, a child autism clinic. So we'll dive mm -hmm. into that piece of it. Cause I'm not an expert in it and I know you're not Jamie, no. but your story and that story will align. So for those that are in that situation, we actually will have an episode shortly after this one about that. You got into a little bit of the details of like what a quadro is, right? And I think a lot, when I've seen a lot of divorces, that gets left out um, often. And usually because the attorney doesn't know the process or one, if they don't know what it is. Two, they don't know the exact process of getting funds available. Talk us through what a quadro is and mm -hmm. how in this case it was utilized. Quadro is the Qualified Domestic Relations Order, okay? And we use this term, in, in general, we, we use the term quadro. But there's also another document called a Court Order Acceptable for Processing, a COAP, C-O-A-P, a Court Order Acceptable for Processing. And for those of you that are in the military or federal employees, uh, maybe you work for the post office or whatever, that's the type of document you would need in order to divide up your retirement account subsequent to the divorce. Right? Most 401k plans, 403b plans, you know, typ typical, you know, public, uh, you know, private sector uh, 401k plans are divided up by the quadro, the Qualified Domestic Relations Order. And that document is effectively a legal document that says, this is what the parties have agreed to. And based on the length of service, the amount of payments, um, that are that are coming off the plan or the value of the 401k plan, all it'll, it'll provide all the details of, of what the agreement is. This person is going to get this for this length of time. And this person is going to keep that for this length of time. This is who the beneficiary is going to be, so on and so forth. And 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 you're right. A lot a lot of attorneys will wait to the very end of the divorce to start talking about this and 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 making it part of the process. The challenge with that is that. Until the document is accepted by the plan sponsor, 
let's just use Fidelity Investments, for example. I worked for a company called Fidelity Investments for nine years, very familiar with their process. Familiar, if Fidelity will process thousands of these every month for people. When that document is created, it is a domestic relations order. It is not technically qualified until it's accepted and approved by the plan. So you, you have to take this document, get it all drafted, it has to be done the right way, sent to the plan sponsor, they have to review it, which could take time, you know, if it sits on somebody's desk for a few weeks. And then if it's not in good order, they'll then send it back to you for corrections. And then you have to go through this exercise again. So if you wait to the very end of the divorce to do all this, you could it could take you six months before you see that money. And the challenge with that is like in our client's situation, she needed that money tomorrow, not next year. So you've got to be very careful about how you go about doing it and, how, and, and what that make to make sure all the I's dotted, all the T's are crossed. It's very, very technical, very, very technical. And you, and we will help. We, we help all of our clients and shepherd them through that process to make sure it's done the correct, the right way. And when you talk about access to it, because usually they're retirement plans, right? All, all they are is qualified plans. Ultimately, you usually can't get to that money, right? If, if yep. me and you aren't 59 and a half, we're not getting to it unless we want tax and withdrawal. With the quadro, is their ability to get access to one of the divorced spouses earlier than that or not? You can get access to it, but you're still responsible for the taxes. Minus the 10% penalty if you're under the age of 59 and a half. Unfortunately, Uncle Sam is going to get his his fair share, regardless of whether or not you're doing the, the benefit is that you if you do it at the time of the divorce, I think you, most plans allow you a year to take a distribution once you have that document in place. So you you uh, once you take the distribution, and a lot of people use it, you know, to to buy, put down money down on a new house or to you know furnish their new place or whatever it is, you can avoid that ten percent penalty by doing it uh, subsequent to the divorce. If not, you can roll it into your own plan. Use it like normal, like an IRA, and move on. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I like doing it subsequent to the divorce and doing it directly out of the four hundred one k because you 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 get the benefit of um, not having that ten percent penalty. If you roll it to your IRA and then take money out later, you can't you can't avoid the penalty at that point. Yeah. So obviously distraught, unorganized, going through a divorce, uh, doesn't have maybe the best attorney who can organize the financials. Uh, what does that process look like in organization? I know we hit upon this on the episode that we had before, but the organization of the financial documents, mm -hmm. what do you see happen most often when someone comes to you with this situation or in a situation, like when you first are trying to organize it, what is the hardest thing for them to, to understand about the financial organization? I think the hardest part of it is that we never have all the information. It's it's different because you know you and I have been certified financial planners for very for a long long time doing this work for a long time and you know what that experience is like when you're dealing with somebody who's in a traditional retirement planning phase of their life right or they're thinking about you know, what what their future future financial life is going to look like they come to you they have their bank records and they have their four hundred one k plan and they have their tax returns and they have all this stuff for in divorce. It is not unusual for us to get 60% of the information the first go around. So I tell people all the time, like, don't panic. This is normal. But, and, and I, I, I use that word organize over and over and over again. And I think that sometimes people that think that's all we do is we organize the information, but it allows us once we, once, once we have a systematic, we have a systematic approach to this and we have a list of documents we need from each of these clients as they, as they come on board. And by organizing that information, we can, it helps us understand what we're missing. And sometimes those are the most important pieces, right? Like it's nice that we have credit card information and we have this thing and we have that thing, but wait a minute, what about that account that, you know, we may, maybe we're going to find some hidden money. Maybe we're going to find a, a 401k plan that we didn't know existed, that you didn't know existed. And by, by getting the information and organizing it and putting it in a way that we can actually work with it, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together, right? Like it's, it's much easier when you can put the, you put the frame together first. And I think that's what we do with that organization is we put the frame and then we know like, okay, now we can see what this is all supposed to look like. Now we, and we'll, we'll see if there's any missing pieces. And then we, then we can, we can search for them at, at that point. How much of that 60% and only getting 60% on the first go round is about trust and still building that relationship? 
It's a good question. I, I think there's some of that. I think there's some of that. The, 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 the beauty of the work that we do is we are real, we are advocates for our clients. And that's the one thing that I try to get across to them early on and help them understand uh, relative to the work we do is like, we are, we're on team story, right? Like we are, we are on your team. We're going to be your lead block. We're going to be there to help you sort through all this. And, and I mean, I, we, we can do, only do so much to help you with the emotional aspects, right? And the legal aspects, because we're not therapists and we're not attorneys, but from a financial perspective, we're going to be there to make sure you get your best, your, 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 the, the most fair and equitable settlement possible. And, and I, I think that resonates with people. So sort of, it might be a little bit of trust. Like, do I really want to share this information? Maybe there's some embarrassment. You know, I'm 50 years old and I haven't saved anything for retirement yet. Or we have a lot of situations where like, hey, we haven't filed taxes in five years. So that can bring up anxiety and some sense of embarrassment for some people. And I, and I can understand that. But once we get into it, I, I really think people understand like, wow, well, I, I've got to get them as much information as possible because this is important. And they really are advocates for us. So that, that if there is any semblance of that, I, I think it fades relatively quickly. Yeah, yeah. That's the point I wanted yeah. to get across to everyone is like that first initial hurdle, whatever it may be. It may be embarrassment. Maybe you just don't have the information or you don't know where to get it. That's okay. But once you start getting in and working with, uh, you know, professionals like me and you, all of a sudden that changes. And now they get you everything. And now you are part of the team. We say part of the family, right? I am part of the family. Now you, there's going to be a lot of things that we, we get to know, we get, don't get to know. There's some things in there, but it's all protected. And what I want people to understand by working with or this episode in general is ultimately having someone like us in your court and representing you and being an advocate for you allows that to go a lot further elsewhere, right? No, we are not attorneys. We're not CPAs. Uh, we're not therapists. However, we do have a lot of experience and education in those areas to bridge some gaps to help you get moving in whatever directions needed while providing you with, hey, we do need to go this direction, right? Mm -hmm. It is time to get an attorney. You got everything organized. Yep. It is time. Or it is, you know, honestly, it's time to get a therapist. Like, you might need to see someone because it's above and beyond our scope. But it's important to have someone that can help connect these areas that maybe you can't see because when you're living in a situation, it's like blinders. You can't, you can't see the bigger picture. Us coming in, we can actually help. Them. Yeah. And it's no judgment zone, right? I mean, yeah. that's, I tell people all the time, like, there's no judgment here. I don't care if you haven't filed taxes in five years. I don't care if you had to file bankruptcy a couple of years ago. Like, it, it, we just need to know, the, understand the what we're working with, and then we can help you figure it out. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As we wind this up, um, and we are in the holiday season, what is what are some things you want to, uh, some takeaways you want people to come with this episode, or those that are sitting at home, maybe thinking about going through a divorce, or have friends that mm -hmm. are, or some initial maybe couple tips that they should be thinking about um, as we get into the new year, and they can take that step forward to the process. Well, I, th I think a couple things. Number one, as bad as you may feel like you have it, just know that there are people out there that have it even worse. Right. And, you know, those are lessons that I think we learned as kids, right? Like our parents probably told us things like that when we were kids. And, and now we're, you know, I'm, I'm seeing it firsthand as an adult, like, wow, it's like, some people have it really rough out there. So, so we've got, we've got to be, we've got to give each other some grace, right? Like you, and you've got to be, you've got to be accepting of other people and you've got, you've got to really just understand like the, the, the holidays, especially if you're going through a divorce, is a very very challenging time. If you have, and and even even more so if you have kids involved, right? Because now they're you're dealing with the emotions that go along with Christmas. Maybe this is your last Christmas as your family unit, and you haven't said that you want a divorce yet. And maybe your significant other doesn't know that it's coming. Maybe you're planning on waiting until January or February to drop that bomb, and you're dealing with all the emotions that go along with this as you're trying to pretend and put on a brave face through the holiday season. And that can be that can bring a world of emotions and, and challenges in and of itself. So give yourself some grace, give other people some grace, because you never know what they're going through. A lot of them have it worse off than you do for sure. And I think I think it, 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 once you've decided that you want to go down that path and it, you've had enough, it's time for you to go in a different direction, whether it's amicable or not. 
you've got to find a way to surround yourself with team you. Team you. Like, we may have even talked about talked about this in, in the po- first podcast we did together. And team you is making sure that you have your financial professionals to, there to support you. Your, your attorney, if you think you're going to need one, get your legal support, get your mental health people, right? Find a good therapist and support groups that will help you through that. There's a ton of Facebook groups out there that can be there to support you. And like, there's so many resources these days, divorce coaches, and you know, they're just, there's just so, so many people out there that are, they're out there to support you. And more importantly, keep your loved ones involved and keep them close to you. Because that was one of the biggest mistakes that I made in my own divorce is pushing them away. Try, I'm not really pushing them away, but trying to keep them at arm's length so they didn't get sucked into that vortex of the divorce that I went through. And it was the worst mistake that I ever made because I actually lost some family members uh, and some friends because they, you know, I, they just, for whatever reason, heard one side of the story, didn't, didn't, didn't pay any attention to mine and just ignored mine. And, and that was, that was because I, I kept them at arm, arm's length. So, so whatever you can do to just be, have that support system around you is, is, is going to be helpful. Yeah. So you heard, heard from Jamie, just talk through it, get your team involved. It's going to be a very emotional time during the holidays. So if you need someone to talk to, you're available. I'm available. We know others that are available. So if you're hearing and listening to this and you just want to DM us or email us, we're here. We're here for you. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Sponsored by Black Mano. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Black Mammoth. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Black Mammoth website www.blackmammoth.com All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice due to various factors, including changing market conditions. The information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Black Mammoth do not guarantee its accuracy and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature and is provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Past performance is not indicative of future results.